I can't use data pump because this data is being provided to a third party that does not use Oracle. The solution here in my view is, is, is obvious. That is, you find a third party that is using Oracle. Unloading data. Well, this seems to be a no-brainer, doesn't it? To unload data, you use data pump. The job is done, it's nice and fast, you can run it in parallel, it's super quick. Fantastic. This is the question that came in. What is the fastest way to unload Oracle data to flat files, for example, CSV format? I can't use data pump because this data is being provided to a third party that does not use Oracle. When it comes to not using data pump, the solution here, in my view, is, is, is obvious. That is, you find a third party that is using Oracle and the job is done. Yeah, just kidding. I understand the reality is there are needs sometimes to get your data out of an Oracle database into a format that is not going to be used by Oracle moving forward. I thought I'd show some demos here, but this is all about, really, about the volume of data you need to unload versus the ease and flexibility. The more data you have to unload, the more work you generally have to put in to get the benefits. And we'll explore this with a demo now. This is all gonna be done with 21C Express Edition, just a running version, running under Linux, under VirtualBox here. So it won't be breathtakingly fast because it's a VM running on a laptop, etc. but we'll get enough of a comparison here. So let's start off with, the easiest way to unload data is generally with SQL CL. We connect here, we're connected to 21C Express Edition. Um, I'll set this running and then I'll explain the script as we go. The first thing the script does is print itself out so you can see what it's doing. We're gonna set array size to 20, and then we're gonna check out the current time, unload some data, and then get the current time again, and obviously the difference is gonna be the elapsed time. What are we unloading? We're gonna unload scott.emp, and we're gonna unload 20,000 copies of it. Now in the other demos, we're gonna unload 100,000 copies of it. So this is actually one fifth the scale of what the other demos are gonna be. And the reason I had to do that is because it takes a little bit of time here and I didn't want to waste your time. So SQL CL can be a bit slow for larger volumes, but the ease is fantastic because literally you simply put this special hint in here, select CSV. It's not a plus hint, it's just the, the actual comment CSV. SQL CL knows that, it's a special thing. And what do we got? We got 5208, 52, about 26, 26 seconds, that's number right? 26 seconds for one fifth the scale. So the others are gonna be 100,000 copies. So if we times this by five, we get the, what, 130 seconds. To do 100,000 copies, it would take about two minutes. It took 26 seconds for one fifth of that. So yeah, 100,000 copies, that's uh, 1.4 million rows. Takes about two minutes in SQL CL, but the, the ability to do it is trivial. You literally type in comment CSV and the job's done. So for small volumes, that's perfect. Two minutes might be getting a bit slow for 1.4 million records. SQL CL does have one extra trick up its sleeve, which can be useful for particular situations. Let me fire that up and we'll see. Now, once again, we print out the script. You can see here there's no query here. I'm just using a command called unload. And you can see the syntax is unload table scott data directory slash temp. The reason this is appropriate for only some cases is the unload command will only unload a table data. It can't unload just a bespoke query. However, it's common, I would imagine, that you have your data in a table and the query you are probably going to run was just select star from table anyway. So if your data is in a table, and in this case, my Scott data table is the same as that query, it's the 1.4 million rows being 100,000 copies of scott.emp, then the unload facility in SQL CL is custom designed to run as fast as possible, even though it's coming through JDBC and the like. So let's set that running and we'll see how we go. Chugging, chugging. Okay, so we see the elapsed time there is about 23 seconds. 
that's a huge improvement on just the Select Star CSV because Unload is designed specifically for unloading data quickly. So if you are just dumping data from a table and not a bespoke query, then the Unload option for SQL CL is going to be a lot faster. Let's move on. SQL P is just an alias for SQL Plus. I'm just a lazy typist. So how about SQL Plus? So in SQL Plus, in the later editions from 18C onwards, we have almost as easy as SQL CL. We have this thing called set markup CSV on. And that says all queries from that point onwards will now effectively put the output as CSV as opposed to just a normal row. So we'll set this one running. And we saw before, so you can see now this one, we're actually doing the genuine 100,000 copies of Scott.m. So for SQL CL, we extrapolated that would be about two minutes, 10, 130 seconds. With SQL Plus, because it's not a Java program, it's an OCI, it's right down in the kernel, uh, we've got about 13 seconds. So 13 seconds for 1.4 million rows, we're getting about 100,000 rows per second spooled out. I'm spooling just to dev null here, because obviously I'm, I'm not trying to in, incur the file overhead cost, especially on a VM. So about 100,000 rows per second, so 13 seconds for the 100,000 copies of scott.emp, all spooling to slash dev slash null. Can we do better? Well, one of the things that SQL Plus is doing is obviously reading from the database and bring it back to the client. So we might be able to get some benefits if we went with UTL file. So let's try that. Because I want to write to dev null, you can't do that with UTL file. So I'm going to cheat. What I've done is I'm creating a file called demo.out, which is actually a named pipe. And then I'll cat that named pipe out to dev null. So the database will think it's spooling out to this file called demo.out, but in reality, it's being sent to dev null. And now I can run my UTL file command. Let's start that running because you can't simply write to slash dev null um, straight from UTL file because it's not a directory object. So we're writing to demo the out, which is actually a pipe, which is simply funneling it out to dev null. So we're getting almost the same as funneling to dev null. All I'm doing is 100,000 copies of scott.emp, but now it's my job to build the string. I have to do all the work in terms of building up the CS file string and then spitting out the lines. So that one took 19 seconds. So it's actually a bit slower than SQL Plus, which seems surprising. But the reason it's slower is the actual act of calling to write out a line of code is expensive. So UTL file spitting out one line at a time got me 19 seconds. SQL Plus being 13 seconds natively is still the benchmark we're trying to um, beat. So let's run my UTL prep again, give myself another named pipe, and let's have a slightly more complicated version of UTL file. This one says, I'm gonna try defer writing lines as much as possible. So it's still the same query, but what I'm gonna do is I've got this string here, which is 32,000 bytes. So what I'm gonna do is simply keep concatenating a row of data to this string until it gets to almost 32K in size, which gets to the limit of how UTL file can write to, and then I'll spit out a line. So now I'm writing out a line to the file every 32 kilobytes, as opposed to once for every row of data. So we'll set that running. This is probably about as good as we can get with UTL file. And that one came down to nine seconds. So that is slightly better than the SQL Plus. SQL Plus bombed out about 13 seconds. Now we're doing it entirely on the database and a bit more complexity. We're still sort of buffering up rows into a string and then dumping it out to UTL file. But we got down to nine seconds now. Great timing, but the complexity has risen. At the sort of the, the very pointy end of performance, but the most complexity is we could actually write our own program. So this is the this is what we're going to run in a second. I'm going to run this program called Oracle ASCII Unload. It only works with ASCII. I haven't done anything in terms of UTF-8, et etc., because my proc isn't that good. And it's going to simply take in a SQL statement, the same SQL statement before, and it's going to unload it to dev null. So what is that program? If we have a look in here, we got our star PC, I'm just lazy typist. It's a pro C program. So what we've done is we've written a program here which says, okay, this is a custom program for the sole purpose of writing out CSV. Um, Tom Kite wrote this originally back in the day, it's on Ask Tom, and we've sort of tweaked that a bit to make it actually compile and work under modern versions. But you can see it takes in various bits and pieces and if you're unfamiliar with Pro-C, um, what it's actually doing is actually doing the same as what we do with Dynamic SQL. 
we actually declare a cursor, prepare this SQL statement that comes in from the command line. We actually describe a list to get all the different columns. And then we go through and actually fetch and spit it all out to the file. So there's a fair bit of code in there. The complexity has now jumped a lot, but obviously once it's written, at least it's done. And now let's actually run it. So in this case, um, it's a nice generic program. You literally pass in the SQL statement and the array size and the user ID, and it's gonna chug away, see how it goes. And it was done in nine seconds. So it's generally as fast or a little bit faster than the UTL file version. So there's some examples of how you can actually get into unloading some data. To summarize the demos we just saw, for most of your needs, SQL CL is gonna be the easiest and trivial. Simply throw in your CSV, job done. It's gonna be slow because it's JDBC and there's a lot of overheads and SQL CL has to be all things to all people. It's got so many options in it. Unload to JSON, unload to XML, unload to CSV, et cetera. That flexibility comes with a performance cost. But for the vast majority of your things, you'll be fine just using SQL CL. It's gonna do the job. If you need to maybe spruce that up, think about using, for example, DBMS Parallel Execute. That's a great way of taking a table or a query and dividing it up into logically sized segments. Even if you don't use DBMS Parallel to actually run the tasks, it's a great way of just using it to, you know, to carve up a table and you can take beginning and ending row ID ranges to then pass that to multiple concurrent versions of SQL CL, SQL Plus, et cetera. If you need a little bit more grunt, so to speak, SQL Plus plus doing it in parallel is probably gonna be adequate for the vast majority of jobs where SQL CL doesn't cut the mustard. So it's gonna, as we saw, it got us 13 seconds for 1.4 million rows. You could probably have several of them running for different ranges of data, and it's gonna be able to pump that data out very, very quickly. If you're at the very, very pointy end, you actually, uh, you have literally terabytes of data you need to get out as fast as possible. You probably want to be looking at the Pro-C solution um, rather than writing UTL folder because the Pro-C one works for pretty much any query. Probably needs to be extended for things like interval and timestamp data types, but to get you going, it's up and running. I'll put it on my GitHub, but also you can download that today. Go to Ask Tom, click on resources, click on downloads, and you can just search for unloader and that Pro-C file is there. Just get yourself GCC, Pro-C, and off you go.